and I'm at my desk today doing a quick video for you all. Um, yeah, just a quick one this week and this one follows on from the video I did a little while ago all about compassion. And in that video, um, I talked a little bit about how we define compassion as compassion focused therapists, what that means. Um, because to really incorporate something into our life, something beneficial, we really need to understand what it is. So I do that in that video. Um, I'd encourage you to check that out if you haven't watched it. The link is in the description there for you. So what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to follow on from that video. And today we are going to talk about the practice part and how we can approach that. Now, there are lots of different ways uh, around that uh, you can bring compassion into your life. But today we're really going to focus on one that is linked to Buddhism. And why are we going to do that? Well, um, yeah, this is because Buddhism offers a practical framework. Buddhist practices um, offer a practical framework for training the mind in compassion. Very powerful stuff. So the spiritual stuff, the beliefs stuff aside, we're talking about the actual practices here. And increasingly practitioners like me and psychologists um, are looking at this stuff more and more because it is so effective. Um, not just with mental health conditions, it doesn't just help us with those. It can also help our physical well-being and also our general well-being, more, more generally. Uh, so it's very, very powerful. So today we're going to look at two distinct aspects of compassion and helping us to understand how we can practice it. And that is the relationship between compassion and suffering. Very important stuff. Um, so we're going to have a look at that and we're going to use a metaphor uh, from Buddhism and it is called the lotus in the mud. And the reason we're going to do that is, is to, to illustrate that, to give you a better understanding of uh, how suffering and compassion are linked together. So when we look at the beautiful lotus, we can notice that it grows in the mud, doesn't it? In the boggy mud. So let's start there. Now in this metaphor, the mud can be thought of as representing our more dark side um, and sometimes maybe our immature side, uh, our self-centered emotions uh, like greed, but also our fears and our anger and kind of psychoanalytic psychology. This would be kind of uh, that, um, that very base self that we've got, the immature side. So we've got our fears and our anger and our greed, um, our need for gratification. And, and we can link that stuff to our thoughts too, can't we? Uh, our harsh judgments of others and as well the behaviours that come from that. Things like aggression, discrimination, violence, cruelty even. Now, all those might be all of the things that we don't like to see when we look in the mirror, uh, but they also might be things that we aren't fully aware of um, in, in ourselves. Um, again, in psychoanalytic psychology, you would call that the shadow self, okay? So it's, it's stuff that you might not know is going on. All of that stuff, all that base stuff is in the mud, in the mud underneath the lotus. Um, as well, we can look at the mud as representing the struggle for life, uh, that evolutionary drive and motivation that we've got to survive, that we share with all animals, all living things actually. And in psychology perhaps as well linking that to the threat response, which we've talked a bit about on the channel, haven't we? Um, and we do share that with other animals and it is evolutionary, uh, linked to our survival and adaptation. So, as we move through life, we've got all this stuff in the mud. We sometimes can feel like we're sinking into the mud, can't we? We're kind of being sucked down into it. And it's where that muddiness can prevent us from seeing the truth of things too. It can kind of cloud our eyes, our, our eyes to the truth. 
So what else is going on here with the mud? Uh, the mud, of course, is the food for the lotus, isn't it? It is sustaining that flower. Without it, there can't be any growth. Uh, the lotus is not going to bloom. Uh, so the relationship between the lotus and the mud is there. It's vitally important. Uh, without the mud, the lotus can't live. So we've got the mud of suffering and we've got the growth of our higher self. Uh, we can see that that evolutionary connection is there. And that struggle of life is contained in the mud. Now, Zen Master uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, who unfortunately did pass away recently. We've lost a great teacher. He used to say that the lotus and the mud are both organic in nature as well, which means that they're both impermanent. This is an idea from Buddhism. It's not, it's not permanent. Everything constantly changing. So that is something very important to remember in this metaphor. Uh, the fact that they're impermanent too, organic. Great way to put it, great way to illustrate. So we can see that the lotus, representing our higher self here, uh, it does depend on the mud. It can't sever itself from that mud because the mud is giving it life, isn't it? So it's the same for us with our higher and our compassion itself. Our compassion awakens for us when we are affected by suffering. Both our own suffering and the suffering of living things around us. And that might be ourselves, it might be other people, it might be animals, or it might be our world, our sense of suffering we get of our environment even. So the lotus in the metaphor, it, it, it really does represent our awakened self, our awakened compassionate mind and our awakened higher self, our better self. And that shift away from that selfish action, the pleasure seeking, desire seeking, um, and really addressing the core of our suffering. And with all that comes the willingness and the commitment to enter the mud of that suffering and to nurture the positive qualities that are there to be found. Love and care and patience, understanding and of course joy as well. Um, all of that, uh, all of those things that allow us to, to respond to the pain of life in ourselves, but also in others, other people and other living things. So, there are two distinct things going on here. These mental abilities, the ability to understand our suffering and to be able to interact with our suffering and to suffer better and the compassion, they go hand in hand. Uh, so that can all help us to engage with our suffering uh, so that we're able to understand it and behave more compassionate, compassionately. Um, and it's no good just kind of hoping that this happens because our minds are such busy places. Um, we really need to take the time to engage with that, to, to train it, to hone it and to learn it uh, when we're looking to incorporate it into our lives. Uh, yeah, because our minds are full of kind of competing thoughts, behaviors, drives, motivation. So we need to take the time to, to, to kind of train this stuff. And so that's where we begin. That's how we get going. We, uh, we recognize this stuff and then we're able to devote our time to, to practicing, to, to making this better. Uh, because it can have very great benefits for our well-being. So we need to actively train it. Uh, so hopefully the metaphor, the way I've explained it, is really going to help you to get a handle on um, how suffering is linked to compassion uh, and give you cause to, to reflect on... Um, how how your relationship to suffering is and how you may be able to learn and and be able to uh get your compassionate more aware self to bloom from that uh mud of suffering now if you enjoyed the video um 
that's absolutely great. <laughs> um, make sure that you uh, subscribe for more of this kind of stuff. And if you've got anything to share, of course, comment. I'm going to go and see to my cat in a minute because he really is meowing. Um, so I will see you next time. Thank you very much for joining me. And thank you for, for my cat as well. Thank you. <laughs>